To begin this video, I first want you to envision the single most badass character that you can possibly think of from any work of fiction. It could be from a movie, television show, anime, video game, I do not care. Just the very definition of a badass character in your mind. Okay, you got somebody? Alright, now then, I want you to seriously ponder this question I'm about to ask you. That character, with probably their awesome outfit, impressive physique, probably hilariously impractical weapon of choice, magical blibbity blah power with all of that do you think seriously that that character could be able to handle some light gardening <laughs> I know, right? I know a lot of you right now, you might not want to admit it and that's fine, but I know a lot of you right now are like just slapping your knees like Damn teching, you're right. I'm sorry, I don't think Guts from Berserk could handle a lot of uh, light gardening. I'm, I'm just assuming Guts is what uh, in, appeared in a lot of your minds when I said that. Um, I mean, yeah, he, he's really badass on the battlefield, but, you know, he's out there, you know, planting some p posies or whatever, and he looks up, the sun hits his head, he doesn't have any proper protection, Guts is going down from heat stroke. You know, Cloud Strife, he's got that badass buster sword that's pretty handy to de-weed your garden, but when push comes to shove, He's gonna have to go inside and get a drink of lemonade. You know what I mean? Um, that is why whenever you're going to have a serious Badass character from any anime or manga any work of fiction really they need to have some head coverage And that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about monkey D Luffy and his signature hat I Think this is wrong. It looks cool, but I think it's wrong. Okay. Hold on a second signature hat this one just makes me think of a lot of death that could have been easily avoided. Signature hat. Getting closer. By the way, these goggles are not even functional. Not quite there yet. Um, oh, here we go. Okay, here we go. Signature hat. Would it surprise any of you if I told you that this doesn't even include like 10% of all the funny hats that I own? <laughs> okay, this is going to be a video talking about not just the straw hat in the actual series, like passed down from Goldie Roger, King of the Pirates, to Red Hair Shanks, who passes it down to Luffy, and the significance of the straw hat in the story itself, but also the symbolism, like what the straw hat actually means in the greater context of the story, okay? And because we're going to be talking about that, this is open to interpretation, okay? Um, I'm sure many of you have different views on what the straw hat really represents. All I can give you is my opinion on this. Um, but there's certain traits from storytelling that authors usually include when they uh, give their main characters some sort of marking. Um, I, and I, I remember very distinctly back when I was in high school, I had an advanced uh, English class that I took. And uh, our, our English teacher was a great. She was this older woman, but she was so good at you know teaching us about like English and literature and all that stuff and and she mentioned one class period about the uh, the practice of marking the main character of your series uh, and for an example of this she used Harry Potter do you think JK Rowling just gave Harry that scar just because it looked cool um, and of course I know in the context of Harry Potter how he actually got the scar but no why did JK Rowling actually give Harry that scar and it's to mark him to mark him as special as unique as like essentially marking your main character as the main character of the story now this cannot just be done with a physical marking like a scar although luffy also does have a scar um but uh, his scar is not really significant like harry potter's scar is extremely significant in the story luffy's scar is just there as just like a testament to um you know how, how, when he was a kid he wanted to show how strong he was and how tough he was so he stabbed himself in the face you know and by the way that one scene of luffy stabbing himself i think that's always been edited out of every like rendition of that I think except from one I think the episode of Luffy is the only rendition of that that actually got it right that actually showed a, a seven-year-old kid stabbing himself in the face with a knife now that I think about it probably best that was left out of the mainstream anime um, but no in, in this in the case of Luffy it's not a physical marking it's a uh, it's a piece of clothing that he wears in this case it's the straw hat and uh, one thing that I really enjoy that Oda did and not just not just Oda but any author is taking just a normal object in everyday life, like something that you wouldn't even think of, something that you would pass by in a store or you'd see somebody wearing. It's just a trivial object, you know, but they take that and they make it something 
that's truly symbolic and something that's iconic of a certain character. I will never look at a straw hat for the rest of my life and not think of Luffy. Unless at some point, I don't know, I end up getting hit by a bus and, and, and all the information, all, all the things from One Piece just get, you know, removed from my, you know, brain at the intense trauma I've just suffered. But beyond that, you know, very unlikely series of events occurring, um, every time I see a straw hat, I'm gonna be thinking of Luffy. And even in this straw hat right here, this is not, this is not an official One Piece straw hat. You could probably tell by the nice little bow on the back of it. No, this is something I just bought at uh, the Dollar Tree where I work, you know, uh, one day it was summertime and my boss is like you know put out these boxes and I open up the boxes and they were sun hats and they all had different colored ribbon around it and lo and behold I'm like oh is there a red one and I'm like bam right there looks just like Luffy's straw hat right so um, let's talk about the straw hat just in the context of the story first because um, we've actually found some stuff out about it throughout the, the series and it's, it's interesting. So the very beginning of One Piece in chapter one, Romance Dawn, the first character to show wearing the straw hat was Shanks. He arrives at Fuchsia, a Fuchsia village 10 years before Luffy sets out on his journey and he has the straw hat and you don't think much of it at first. You know, it's just, you know, Shanks wearing the straw hat. It's actually weird going back and seeing Shanks wear it now. He looks weird with it. You know what I mean? Like, even though it was his hat originally and his first appearance was him wearing the hat, it's still weird to see him wear, wear that thing, considering it's so, it, once again, 20 years being on top of Luffy's head, it's iconic of him. Like, anyone else that wears it, it's like, okay... Shanks, I know it was yours beforehand, but you take off the hat. It's Luffy's. So, um, after the events of Romance Dawn, after Luffy proves himself, of course, and then he gets kidnapped by Higuma, and then you know, Shanks has to go and rescue him, and he loses an arm, and he's about to depart, uh, he takes off the hat and passes it on to Luffy and says, you know, you give me back that hat when you become a great pirate. And right there, that was the impetus, right there in Luffy's life, for him to become a pirate. Um, this was the earliest point in Luffy's life that we've really explored uh, when he was uh, seven years old. Uh, that was when the seed of becoming King of the Pirates was planted in him there. And uh, I did a video about what Luffy's life would be like if he was a Marine. And essentially, in order to make that series of events plausible, in order to make that video, like that separate universe, I basically had to exclude Luffy meeting Shanks because that was the moment that did it. Um, Garp was raising Luffy at that point, so uh, if he never met Shanks, Luffy could have very well of just, oh, okay, well, Grandpa wants me to be a strong Marine, so I, I you have no other reason to not become one, so you're going to become a Marine. So that's really what did it. And Luffy is a man that is very loyal to his principles and to pr his promises, okay? When he says that he's going to make a promise with somebody, he's going to try his utmost to keep it. And if he can't keep it, that is something that physically and mentally just it really damages Luffy, like seriously, because Luffy's such a fun, loving, carefree kind of guy. And, you know, I think a lot of times, and this is probably the most known for Saba Ondi, what happened at the end of that arc when the Straw Hats were separated. But when Luffy meets somebody or, the, you know, he wants to make a promise with somebody, he's always very cheerful. It's like, oh yeah, don't worry, you know, come sail with me and we're going to become King of the Pirates, I promise you, it's going to happen. And, and, you know, we'll all be together and it'll all work out and we'll all be friends, we'll all be Nakama. And then at the end of Shabondi, when he failed, you, Luffy was a wreck after that. Like, he just broke down crying because it's just like, oh my god, it wasn't supposed to be like this. You know, we weren't... What? No. Right? So, he's somebody that's very loyal to that end. And so that promise that he made with Shanks, he is going to try to keep it no matter what. And this hat represents that promise. Okay, so what the straw hat means for me, unbroken promises and a never ending dream. Those are the two things that I would associate most with this. While it's on Luffy's head and because Luffy is the one that's the most famous for wearing it, it represents that promise overall, you know, the promise to become King of the Pirates. He who wears this hat will become King of the Pirates. Basically, that's the gist of it. Um, in a grander context, it represents the undying dream. Because look at the lineage of the hat. Who owned the hat before Luffy? Shanks. Who owned the hat before Shanks? Roger. And by the way, where did Roger get the hat? That's something else. Because the thing with One Piece, the story, is that it stretches like there's going to be things involved way before Roger. Roger lived around, you know, he died 24 years ago. 
what was he like in his um i think he was like in his 50s when roger was executed so you know we're talking about like 70 years or so when roger was born and everything like that maybe he had the hat ever since he was a little kid who knows but you know we're gonna find out stuff about the void century and the d clan from way back when so it's possible that this hat could be very old it could have been passed down from some member of the D-Clan to the next member of the D-Clan, eventually landing to Roger and then to Shanks. And, and Shanks, I think it's a fair bet to say Shanks is a bearer of the will of D. We don't know his full name. We don't even know if Shanks is his first name or his last name. All right? You know, uh, he's, he's he, I don't know, he has red hair, so I guess he's Irish. Sh Shanks D. O'Shaughnessy. I, I don't know. Let's go with that. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty, pretty confident that Shanks is going to have the D initial just to make all of this make sense. Um, although there is another way you could view it without him having the D initial and we'll get to that, but we're talking about Roger here. Okay. So at some point in his life, Roger got the hat. Either he got it passed down from somebody else, in which case the dream continuing on makes sense, or he's the one that actually either made the hat or he bought the hat. You know, he's just walking through a, a, a stall one day and he's just like, ah, shiver me timbers. That looks look like a dapper hat matey i will take it I'm like okay sir it's 50 berries ah here you go oh i'm feeling like lucky with this hat i think i'm gonna go start a pirate crew oh hey look there's some guy living on a boat let's go see what's going on with him you know like immediately after he buys the hat he runs into rayleigh just like hey i have no idea what's going on but i feel like starting a pirate crew let's go and take over the world as a pirate <laughs> that, that makes it even funnier like roger was i mean roger was just completely off his rocker like he was just legally insane the entire time but just he had luck on his side and everything just worked out that would be hilarious <laughs> you know he's like he's not this mastermind he's just some nut job that's like i want to be king of the pirates and just everybody followed him at that point onward but he gets the hat all right he gets the hat we see it for the first time when he's uh w when he's meeting rayleigh and that's like the big message. I remember when that chapter was released and everyone had like a what the f moment, you know, like, are you really, are you serious? It's the same damn hat. So he journeys with his crew, uh, the Roger pirates, the jolly Roger pirates. And they go and, you know, he, Roger becomes king of the pirates, discovers Raftal, you know, the one piece hides it there, disbands the crew. Um, at some point while they were on the crew together though, while, while they were journeying, this was before Raftal, this was before any of that. He already passes the hat down to, uh, Shanks because the only time that we ever see Roger wearing this hat is when, during his younger days, like the youngest we've ever seen Roger when he first met Rayleigh. All the times that we see Roger, you know, while he's actually on a, like on the pirate ship with Crocus and Rayleigh and he's got the badass mustache, um, yeah, the stash, stash fruit, you know, th that's why him and Whitebeard were such good friends. But anyway, yeah, all the times we see him on the ship as a pirate, uh, he's never wearing the straw hat. It's always like his traditional, like the bicorn pirate hat with his sigil on it. Um, it could be for a reason very similar to Luffy, uh, how Shanks passed it down onto Luffy because Luffy reminded Shanks of Roger, the things that he was saying, and he felt like a, a fire burning in this boy, like he's going to be the one, he's going to be the one that's going to shake this era to its core and then so shanks decide and you know this is shanks's prized possession he's not just gonna give this away so he really saw something in luffy at age seven to just give this away to some random kid living out in the boondocks of the east okay so he passes down this hat so it's very possible that if roger did not make the hat or if he didn't buy the hat like if it was passed down to him could have been the same exact thing he saw shanks he saw something like this kid's gonna be you're gonna be big kid yarg and he passes down the hat if you're wondering why I'm giving Roger that kind of a accent, um, the Funimation dub, if you don't know, basically made Roger sound like a stereotypical pirate, which sounds kind of lame. It sounds like something the four kids dub would do, but come on. If, if you're going to think of a stereotypical, YARG ME HEARTIES pirate, you're going to think of Roger. I mean, even Oda kind of designed him that way, all right? But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... So, yeah, Roger could have, you know, somebody could have uh, had the hat before Roger, could have looked at him, and it's like this kid, and then he passes it down, and that, that's just how it goes. Um, now, if you don't want to say that Shanks had the Will of D, uh, and uh, you want to say that Roger was the originator of the hat, like, he made it. I think that would be a little bit more poetic than him just buying it from a stall from some sweaty merchant, you know? Um, let's say he made the hat himself, and he just passed it down to Shanks. You could always view Shanks 
as the mediator of the hat. Because Shanks, he doesn't really want to become King of the Pirates. Shanks is a Yonko, but that doesn't mean that he necessarily wants to become the king. He doesn't really seem to have much interest in Raftal or the One Piece, actually. So, um, that's kind of interesting how Roger became the king. Luffy obviously wants to be the king. Shanks really doesn't have any you know, t ties to that end. In fact, if there's anybody on the planet that would actually have a good shot at just finding Raftal without the use of the road poneglyphs, it would be someone that was on Roger's crew. It would be either, you know, now, I always, th there's conflicting stories of this each and every time that Shanks and Buggy were part of, were, were on Raftal. Like, Shanks and Buggy have been there before because people always question, is like, well, if Shanks and Buggy were there, then how come Buggy doesn't go after the One Piece? How come, if he knows where this great treasure is, how come he's screwing around trying to find the treasure of Captain John or whatever? Um, you know, I, I, I don't... I, I, I want to say they were part of the crew at that time. You know, uh, and I hope that Oda definitely explains this because this was the grand voyage of Roger. This is, you know, Roger was there, Rayleigh was there, Crocus was there. They went on many journeys beforehand, like ne uh, Neko Mamushi and Inurashi were on journeys with Roger and the crew before, but they didn't accompany them to Raftal. It's always possible that they could have been on this grand adventure. They could have stopped at an island, could have been Zoe, and they could have just been like, and then that's like Shanks and Buggy could have gotten off there. Roger could have been like, you know, it's like, okay, listen up, me apprentices. You know, this journey is going to get rough. And we might not make it. Not all of us might make it. So it's up to you two. You're the new generation, you know. And and they might have left after that. It's always possible, you know. Um, if it's not the case, you could always just say, well, the reason Buggy doesn't go after the One Piece is because he know he's been there before. He knows how tough it would be to get there, or he respects the captain's wishes or something like that. Like, it would be kind of a dickish thing if, if Buggy was on Roger's crew and they helped stash the One Piece. He just kind of goes behind everybody's back and just steals the One Piece, you know? So even Buggy would have you know, some problems with that, some scruples about, you know, raiding his former captain's treasure. So you could always say that. And also, Buggy might know. He's like, oh yeah, I know where the One Piece is. It's just way too hard to get there and I would die if I tried, you know? Last time we tried it, we had a whole crew of literally the most badass pirates that ever, ever sailed the New World. Now all we got is a freaking, uh, a guy that throws knives that looks like an emo. We got the, the beast dude, Furry, with a giant lion that likes to eat a lot, and an admittedly sexy, a suspiciously smooth lady with giant bazongas. I, I don't think we would really stand a chance at this time around, you know? Um... Right, so that that could be a reason there, um, but I just I, I even if even if Shanks was there or wasn't there, he has a good shot because he actually already sailed with Roger. All right, he would know what Roger would do, and you know maybe like things like that. But Shanks doesn't really seem to have any interest in that shit. Kaido and Big Mom and Blackbeard certainly do. Well, Blackbeard's goal is just to try to kind of take down the entire government, but you know probably become king of the pirates along the way, just a lot more bloodshed. Kaido and Big Mom definitely want to become king of the pirates. Shanks is just chilling out, so you could just say yeah, Shanks doesn't have the D, he was just a mediator to hold the hat between Roger and Luffy. Okay, you could you could view it like that. Um, but that brings back the symbolism at least of the un, the undying dream. It will always continue on. And maybe not necessarily the dream of just becoming King of the Pirates, because remember the will of D also carries with it its own kind of thing, which is separate from being King of the Pirates, although it could be included with that. The objective of the will of D, they are the enemies of God who are God in the context of this, you know, One Piece world, uh, the Tenryubito, the Celestial Dragons, um, taking down the world government. I would say that's the overall goal of the Will of D. There's probably a lot of other stuff involved there that we don't know about, but, um, yeah, the, the bearers of the Will of D are going to be the ones to take down the world government. It could be in the way that Blackbeard wants to do it, which is, you know, sheer destruction and bloodshed, or it could be the way that Luffy would do it. Luffy would probably just become King of the Pirates, and Luffy just kind of wants everybody to be free. Luffy's not into the kind of ruling thing. Like, Luffy's not going to become King of the Pirates, sit up there on a throne and just issue orders. That's not what he's about. He wants to become King of the Pirates because King of the Pirates has the most freedom, and he probably wants the most freedom for the rest of the world, okay? And just in response of that and from what they did with Robin and everybody that he has to take down the world government okay so the hat can also represent that as well now um, I also kind of would be remiss if I did not bring up the sheer indestructibility of this hat this hat 
might have permanent armament hockey of the gods bound to it. There have been theories, I shit you not, actual theories, that this hat has the power of a devil fruit in it that makes it indestructible. Okay? <laughs> there are actual theories about this. I'm not even saying that because I think they're silly. I just think that's awesome, you know? Because think about this. At the beginning of the... First off, the hat has lasted a tenure, a tenure atop the head of Goldie Roger. Do you know how many fights that guy was in? He went up against an entire fleet, one ship versus like a hundred, in the middle of a giant storm against Sheiky the Golden Lion. He came out of that unscathed. He found Raftal. You know there was probably an epic battle there at some point. All the other young, he dealt with Big Mom at some point. Maybe Kaido, we don't really know. Do we have an age of Kaido, how, how old Kaido is? I don't believe we do. But he dealt with a lot of battles, Roger. And he managed to get out, and that hat was fine. Same thing with Shanks. Yonko, one of the four emperors, managed to get out of fine. Um, and then, of course, we get to Luffy. Luffy, for the beginning stages of his journey, did not even have a freaking rope tied around this thing. Which makes me think that Roger and Shanks didn't have it either. You know? At the, one of the very first story arcs of the series, Buggy knocks it off his head and impales it with his, uh, knives. Thankfully, being a straw hat, it's easily repairable. Nami just took it and stitched the whole thing back up and just gave it to him. Uh, but you'd think it got more it would get more damage throughout the story, but it doesn't. Eventually, Luffy just ties a string around it and just lets it lay behind his uh, back whenever he's fighting. But all of the crazy fights he's been in. He, Luffy's been up against characters. Luffy's been attacked by a Kainu, whose literal thing is magma. Granted, though, I don't think the straw hat was on Luffy's head when he fought a Kainu. If that was the case, I think it would, like, when Akainu got even close to him, the damn thing would have just come busted. You know, like, dry straw, and here's magma heated to, like, over a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. The thing would just go... Pfft. But this brings up a very interesting point. And, um... There's two ways you can view this. The, here, here's the scenario. Is this hat going to get destroyed by the end of One Piece? Now, the one way you're going to view it is absolutely not, because it is the symbol of the dream... And just the icon of Luffy. I mean, it's the straw hat pirates, straw hat Luffy, Mugiwara. Gotta have the straw hat, right? But we're talking at the very end of One Piece, at the point where it's like the final battle or something. Um, you know, beyond that point there, uh, you know, when all bets are off, you know, would the hat be destroyed? And I could see it going like the hat is not destroyed. It might be, it might get charred or like burnt or something, but it's like the, the hat lives on as the symbol. Or you could spin it on its head and be the whole like the hat gets destroyed, but it doesn't matter because it's, it's, it's what, you know, the, the, what the hat meant that really means something. The dream. The promise. The hat was just a symbol. That's all it was. Nothing more. Um, but I, I would like to... I wouldn't like the hat to be destroyed. Mostly because um, this hat is like the most precious thing in the world to Luffy. You know? Um, and so his whole thing is he wants to become a great pirate that's even greater than Shanks. And since Shanks is a Yonko, pretty much the only higher position there is King. Become King of the Pirates and give this hat back to Shanks. That's also another possibility, too. Although, I, I don't see that going down. I don't see Luffy just walking up to Shanks at the end of the story and just, okay, here's your hat back. And Shanks is like, cool, bro. Later. I think, I think Shanks, if the hat is still around at this point, and if we do have an epic moment where, you know, Luffy goes to return the hat to Shanks, maybe it's a mirror of that scene when Shanks was bestowing the hat to Luffy. Um, if there's even going to be a mirror of that scene, I think Shanks would just let him keep it at that point. It's like, he'd be like, Luffy, you've worn that hat for like 20, well, by then it's probably going to be like, you've worn that hat for 30 years of serialization. I think you can keep it at this point. You know, I think you've earned it, right? So yeah, that's the situation. No, when I looked up, uh, cause whenever I think of a video idea, I always look up on YouTube, you know, how many other people have made a video about this? Um, you know, cause if somebody made a video about this like two weeks ago, I don't want to like steal their thunder or something like that um but uh surprisingly i didn't see a lot of videos about this the only video i saw discussing the straw hat itself and, and like what it meant there was a video by legend mac a, like i think over a year ago uh he did but aside from that i didn't really see anybody else talking about like 
the actual symbolism of the hat. Maybe that's just because I, I'm, I'm a fan of, like, literature and, like, poetry and, like, what it actually, like, like, not just reading the words, but actually what they mean, not just looking at, like, how a character's dressed, like, really badass, but really what they mean. I mean, I'm not even gonna tell you the limbo world that you get stuck in, though, when you think of that, and you think of all the awesome male main characters of stories that have giant swords for weapons, because guess what a giant sword is, like, uh, indicative of? Phallic symbol. Hey, check it out, I'm Ichigo. I got a giant sword. Hey, check it out, I'm Cloud, or I'm, I'm, I'm Squall. I got a giant sword, you know, as my main weapon that I grip tightly. So, there's, there's a double edge to this, you know, of looking into the deeper meaning behind all of these symbols and weapons and things. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope we have a little bit of a discussion down below on what the straw hat means to you, and, uh, in the greater context of the One Piece story, and, 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 uh, really, where it could go at the end of it like could it be destroyed and then you know we we just you know oh that the dream is fulfilled or something like that the straw hat is no longer necessary because luffy succeeded he brought to light the envisioned of the 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 900 year dream of the will of d you know something like that or if it's still around he gives it back to shanks shanks just lets him keep it and that's where it ends um even the stage right before the time skip where we like we leave on that um that like four week gap that we had remember that or like you guys you one Piece fans that have been around for a while, you will remember that uh, after chapter 597, when we begin the time skip into the new world, uh, the last scene is that hat. And we all remember that hat because no One Piece for over a month afterwards. I was in high school when I was a senior when that happened. That was hard to get through that, but we all got through it. Real One Piece veterans know the struggle there. Especially since in the anime, there was no break. It was just one episode, and the very next episode, they're at the time skip. There you go. But anyway, yeah, I've jawed on long enough. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. And uh, remember, gotta wear a good hat. Just pick out a good hat when you're doing gardening. Uh, heat exhaustion, sunstroke, it's not fun, guys. It's not fun. Wear a straw hat. Dollar, a dollar tree. Pick them up. Signing out.